Cameroon's indomitable lions roar wild this evening at the Yaoundé's Amadou Ahijo Stadium as they trash the Harambe Stars of Kenya three four goals to one in a crucial encounter played on the ticket on the way to Morocco 2025 Afghan qualifiers. With this, Team Cameroon tops Pool J with seven points plus. Girls vision for the future is this year's team for the International Day of the Girl Child, a day that was set aside by the United Nations organization years ago with special place given to the girl child. And condemnation are amounting from the different mayors of Cameroon following the brutal standoff between the mayor of Ezeka Sivan Job with a police official as with with one of this recent outing from the Cameroon United Council for Cities known for short as UCCC who condemns the act. Those were major stories. Good evening to you all. This is High Prime of Friday the 11th of October 2024 with me, Larry Kevin Sabot. We begin this newscast with a sad one from Mamfi in Manu Division where three persons lost their lives yesterday in a ghastly road accident in Bisangabang village, a locality close to Mamfi as they were transporting a corpse to Mfuni village in Manu Division. The, the people involved in the such accident were transporting the corpse before they had suffered from a head-on collusion with a Karina E vehicle that led to uh, that led to the vehicle that they were into that um, that smash sorted resulting to three casualties at the spot while survivors were taken to the survivors were taken to the Mafia district hospital for medical attention the separate survivors are predominantly mourners who went for the covenant ceremony of that person who died and away from that sad story we now move on to the story with Alice Lekel Liengwe Kome who talks on the dangers of consumption of roadside drugs as pharmacists in Cameroon and the uh, southwest to be precise are condemning uh, the use of roadside drugs that is predominantly used by uh, Cameroonians as they outline the enormous challenges and and negative attribution con uh, connected to the consumption of roadside drugs in the reports that comes next Alice Lickey Lengue Komi outline some of the dangers attributed to roadside drugs consumption in recent times there has been an increased rate of roadside drugs all over the country these vendors cannot diagnose or prescribe medication, which is not the case in Cameroon. And this has a huge negative effect on the community. Many negative effects when you take roadside medication. One of them is the increased um, resistance we find with antibiotics, antifungals, and other antimicrobials. This is because the people handing drugs on the street corners and in so-called cosmetic shops are not trained. And whatever they are giving out to the patient, they themselves are not masters of what they are doing. They are not trained. And so they don't know the appropriate dose and the duration of treatment. So when patients keep exposing themselves to these roadside medicines, they take inappropriate doses and thereby the germs become resistant to that um, antimicrobial, to that molecule. And this creates a public health hazard because not only that patient will come down with the negative consequences, the general public will suffer. The World Pharmacist Day is used to emphasize on the importance of getting drugs in pharmacies. Pharmacists do not only function at the level of community pharmacies. Pharmacies, the title a pharmacist is given to someone who is well trained and can work in industries, manufacturing industries, can work in uh, hospitals, can work in the community, can work in wholesale or distribution outlets. So the message we as pharmacists came to pass across to the world is that we want people to take effective medicines, quality medicines, 
and safe medicines. These roadside drugs has recently resulted to the increased rate of crimes in our communities. They are supposed to know that they have to go to the authorized pharmacy so that they can get genuine drugs in order to avoid a lot of hardship that is ongoing in our community like uh, hepatitis, liver cirrhosis and a lot of money is being lost. We have a lot of uh, children and youths now on narcotics and so on so it is better for you and your family to be protected because you don't have another life again. And I plead with the members of the public to check the school bags of their children and so on because we've started seeing cases of children going to school with court glasses instead of going to school with pen and pencils and books. It is just because we, the members of the public, are not taking our responsibility to know which type of drug and what our children are taking and their behavioral changes as times goes on. Authorized pharmacies can be easily identified. Population has to be very vigilant. A pharmacy, an authorized pharmacy, is a registered um, business controlled by a well-trained personnel. You can identify it with a, a cross, pharmacy-like cross with a snake in the cup. Then you walk in there, you have a right to ask for the qualification of the pharmacist, and they will show you. So members of the public are supposed to know that they have to go to the authorized pharmacy so that they can get genuine drugs. It is therefore important to be sure of what gets into one's system, because just as medication is aimed at curing an ailment, it can also easily cause harm or even kill if used wrongly. Remain in the health sector this time around as the world celebrated world mental health yesterday. Mental health experts are calling on Cameroonians to take their mental health quite serious. A case in point is the director of TA Global Mental Health Consultancy Service who, are in the, who spoke to our reporter Alice Leke Liengwe Kome on the need for people to call on the services of mental health experts. Every 10th October of each year, the world celebrates World Mental Health Day, making everyone in the world more aware of the issues that are faced by people struggling with mental health is a great way to offer the beginning of a solution to the problem. The World Federation for Mental Health established World Mental Health Day in 1992. As such, in some countries around the world, it formed just one part of the large mental illness awareness week. It's a day set aside for the purpose of bringing greater awareness to what is mental health. WHO says there is no health without mental health, and that means your mental health is paramount because your mental health controls your physical health, and your physical health equally has an impact on your mental health. So we must value that, and it's a day that concerns you, and so it's celebrated. So it's you we actually celebrate because. The purpose for mental health is actually about productivity. It's not about the anxiety, the depression, the schizophrenia or bipolar, no. It's about your well-being and your productivity. So your mental health affects your well-being, your well-being affects your productivity. So because every individual seeks to become more valuable in the society, in the community, in the family, in personal lives, ambitions, you desire to achieve greater results, your mind is that tool that you require to take your life to the next level or to improve on the the 2024 team, Mental Health at Work, it is a means of exposing mental health problems ranging from issues like depression and anxiety disorders to conditions like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder which affect millions of people around the world. We celebrate this day because People out there are excellent, they want to do much more, and we are there to tell you, you can do much more. So, mental health is the most crucial part of your health, because uh, without enjoying quality services and products uh, about mental health, we risk not achieving our full potentials. So, the, its definition says it all, because it's defined as the state of well-being in which every individual can realize his or her own potentials, can cope with the normal stresses of life, 
and can work fruitfully and productively and is able to make a positive contribution to his or her community. So just from that definition, we find its relevance in our day-to-day -day life. So now, with respect to what can be done for people to enjoy or for people's mental health not to be affected. According to certain statistics, one in four people will experience some kind of mental health problem during their lifetime and many more will see friends or family members who are affected. Although mental health is so prevalent, it is one of the most neglected forms of health in the world today. Almost one billion people are still living with a mental health disorder right now and millions of people die each year from the impact that mental health has had on them. Even so, many people still do not have access to the care that they need to appropriately handle these concerns. With purpose of World Mental Health Day being to raise awareness of mental health issues, increase education on the topic, and attempt to eliminate the stigma attached, it is hoped that this in turn will encourage sufferers to seek out help and support. Awareness first, and then for, for, for effective management and prevention, we require early screening and detection. What you don't screen, you can't know. And when we screen early, we can prevent the outcome of negative mental health outcomes, which is associated with greater levels of disability and unproductivity. That's why you see frustration growing in communities because those aspects were neglected from being identified and prevented or managed. So uh, when we have screening done now, we then go to management. And that's why we recommend that the mental health case management approach should always be used, which as a consulting firm, TA Global Mental Health, we offer quality training and services in those areas. So we recommend everybody, because when we do that, we can identify the greater potentials within each and everybody, because truth be told, you can do much more than whatever you have meant of the quality of life. So and this year's team is actually mental health and workplace. So it's about you, the work are becoming much more productive and we are grateful for having the amazing workers around our nation and our community and who are that doing a lot to improve on social life. In the meantime, the World Health Organization has gotten on board with supporting World Mental Health Day and sees it as an opportunity to have a massive scale up given to the investment made in the support of mental health. Hence, it's time to push away the stigma, embrace the struggle and invest in the opportunity for a more stable future when it comes to mental health as Mental Health Day is a great day to begin. And many thanks to our reporter there. We move on to education. Victorious Lady, an association uh, of young women drawn from the different walks of life with the sole aim of promoting the well-being of the society has donated didactic materials to some schools in the southwest region. A case in point is that of the government primary school Moliko Boya where they set uh, Victorious Ladies deemed it necessary to equip the school and the pupils with the necessary didactic materials so as to fast track the 2024-2025 academic year. We have details with that on with our reporter Danny Ikomi Boa. As part of encouraging education within the Southwest region, Victoria's Ladies Organization has put smiles on the faces of these peoples of government primary school Moliko. Donating these school items comes as a way of demonstrating their solidarity within the community. <laughs> are up for empowerment and solidarity so this is one of our activities and it is our first major activity which we are carrying out as the association that we have the mind that this particular government primary school has some IDPs and some needies so that is why we decided to visit them first taking place this Thursday October 10th was also marked with educative talks to the young minds on the importance of hygiene and sanitation. We know that the teachers educate them on certain things, but it takes more than just your classroom teachers to educate you. That's why we have our parents in the house to also educate us on certain things such as hygiene and sanitation, road safety, rights and duties of a child. So we decided that we were going to put more light to the things that the teachers have been teaching them. That is why we decided to take 
take upon us to educate them on the, the, the topics. On her part, the head teacher of the school thanked the organization for such a move as it will go a long way to assist the pupils, most especially the internally displaced persons schooling among them. The victorious ladies from Moliko and, and his association that they have come, come to our outreach children with gifts, books and pen. So I'm overwhelmed with joy. I'm very grateful. I'm happy they have come at the right time because most of our children, they needed these books. Yeah, most of the children in this school are mostly IGP, so we are overwhelmed with joy. At the end of the exercise, the peoples express gratitude and shower words of blessings to the organization. And if you are watching us, you are on to High Prime, and we are coming to you live from our new studios here in High Television. We now take you to uh, the story on the International Day for the Girl Child under the 2024 team Girls Vision for the Future. Cameroon joins the world over today to celebrate October 11, 2024, as the International Day of the Girl Child, a day that was established by the United Nations organization some years ago. It was Aside to give emphasis and relevance on the struggles and hurdles that the girl child go through. With uh, that report, completes herself with Staff Lady Aisha. Every year on October 11, the world celebrates International Day for the Girl Child. This day shines a light on girls' potential and global challenges. It is a day to promote girls' rights and address persistent gender inequalities. The essential goal is to encourage more opportunities for girls, as this year's team itself says, girls' vision for the future. The day also addresses issues like education access, healthcare, and freedom from discrimination and violence. This day celebrates empowering girls and highlighting their role as leaders and change makers. And we want to join in the celebrations as we reflect on areas where the girl child needs support, inclusion, and growth. The theme for this year's uh, Day of the Girl Child is Girls' Vision for the Future. In recognition of the fact that girls continue to lag behind their male counterparts in very many areas. And therefore they need our support. To name just a few of these areas, we'll see that there's so much that is working against the girl child especially in poor countries one of the major barriers for girls is gender inequality which affects their education health and safety by focusing on these issues international day of the girl child advocates for vital changes that can provide a better future for girls everywhere the day also calls for action to end practices like child marriage and support efforts to provide equal opportunities in digital and technological fields the significance of this day goes beyond just recognizing the challenges girls face. It promotes the idea that empowering girls help to reduce poverty, enhance economic growth, and lead to more stable and inclusive societies. It is about acknowledging their strength, power, and potential to improve the world. This day serves as a reminder that supporting girls' education and rights is essential for achieving global developmental goals. Moving on to one of our top stories, as earlier mentioned, following the dramatic twist of events between the mayor of Izeka, Sivenchok, and one of the senior police officers in that locality of the Nyong and Kele Division of the Central Region regarding the construction of a mischief structure that was envisaged by the police department in Izeka, but the mayor of Izeka said they didn't have the required documents for the go-ahead of that construction of of that checkpoint by the police department over there this led to a standoff between both men as uh, the police the senior police officer uh, attacked the male that led to some injuries as such some males in Cameroon uh, under the leadership of the United Towns and Council for Cameroon, known for short as CUCCC, are condemning the act as they want the said police officer to be arrested and court martial. More on that in the following story.
The recent standoff between the mayor of Ezeka, a town in the Nyong and Kili division of the central region of Cameroon, is making rounds on the social media space and quite predominant into this conversation. <laughs> The dispute that stems from the construction of a police checkpoint in the locality as the mayor Selven Jok opposed such construction that doesn't have a construction permit from the council as the municipal magistrate embarks on dismantling the said structure in a violent manner, the police officer exerted force on the mayor. Si tu me bouscules, je vais te faire mal. Ne t'amuse pas avec moi. Laisse-le faire son travail, laisse-le. Ouais. Casse. This act of the police commissioner has been condemned by the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon, UCCC, an association that encompasses all the different mayors of Cameroon. Just to reiterate, the mayor of Ezeka was elected on the ticket of the opposition party PCRN of Cabra Libri. And on to sports, Team Cameroon in the Metal Lions has recorded a sweet victory against the Harambe Stars of Kenya this evening at the Yaoundé's Amadou Ahijo Stadium as they triumphed in a remarkable four goals to one victory against the Harambe Stars of Kenya. This led to Team Cameroon securing the top spot at uh, on Group J as they are now top of the group with seven points as they are being followed immediately by Team Zimbabwe who comes up with uh, five points. This as the first goal was uh, opened by the captain, the team captain, then San Abubakar in a penalty shootout. Later on, before the first phase of the game uh, could close, they opened the second goal again the Harambe Stars of Kenya, leading to a two new victory but other goals came from other uh, other goals came during the second phase of the pro of the match as Basogok Christian Basogok scored the last goal while uh, Christopher Wu who secured injured was taken out of the pitch during the first phase of the game congratulations goes to all the indomitable lion supporters and the national team as a whole and with that sports news, this is where we come close tonight's news package. High Prime of Friday, the 11th day of October 2024. Thanks for watching and good night from our new studios here in High Television.